Are we prepared to say here and now that traditional African spirituality is a middle class black system? Is that what we're saying? Is traditional African spirituality a middle class culture? Because that's what it is in practice. That is exactly what it is in practice. And no one can convince me that Almighty God intended for people to go broke in order to walk their spiritual journey. You can't convince me of that. You can't convince me of that. We are operating along the same lines Although less exploitative and less demanding, traditional African earth-centered spiritual traditions are walking along the same capitalist lines as the church. We need a revolution in traditional African spirituality. You know what I'm hoping for? I'm hoping that all the young priests and priestesses across traditions... I'm hoping that all the young priests and priestesses across traditions, I'm hoping that all the young priests and priestesses across traditions will come together and revolutionize the compensation system for traditional African spiritual services. I'm hoping the young people, those under 50, will come together and come up with a system. We need a revolution in the financial arrangements that are required for people to access their ashe. We need a revolution in the financial expectations of what people are expected to pay in order to begin, continue, and fulfill their spiritual destiny on this earth. I'm hoping we can come together and say, listen, y'all, for people who want to pay, you can pay. But if you can't afford to pay, here is service. And think about it. With all the work we need in the black community, all the services we need, all the systems we need, all the institutions we need, why can't we leverage people's talents in exchange for spiritual work? Why can't we leverage people's skills in exchange for spiritual work? Why can't we leverage people's professional expertise in exchange for spiritual work? Why can't we do that? Why is everything money, money, money? You cannot convince me that the Orisha, the ancestors, the Abusum, the Egun, you can't convince me that the Loa and the Netter intended for African spirituality and its service to only come to those who are financially able to pay for those services. You cannot convince me of that. There has to be another way because there's a revolution in African spirituality. People are tired of the hero-centered religious traditions. By hero-centered, I mean it's like a comic book. You have a hero, right? Normally a prophet. And everything revolves around that prophet's teachings. That's okay. I don't knock it if that's what you want. That's hero-centered religious worship. African tradition is not about hero-centered religious worship. African spiritual tradition is about the fulfillment of a divine destiny that you came into this world prepared to obtain. And everything you do is based around worshiping the creator as you adhere to the fulfillment of your God-given purpose on earth. There's a revolution in getting back in touch with the ancestors. There's a revolution in African people in the West trying to get in touch with the rituals that will enable them to wake up to their spiritual powers. The ancestors are sending millions of our brethren to comedic systems of study. The ancestors are sending millions of our brethren to the Ifa and the Dogon and the Akan systems of study. The ancestors are sending our people back to us, but they will be rejected. They will lose their motivation. They will lose their inspiration. 
They will lose their drive if they walk out of a church. They walk out of a church and they come to your spiritual house of worship. They just left the church because they got tired of being financially exploited in the name of Jesus. And then they come to your traditional African house of worship. And as soon as they get there, they're being told, this is what this costs. 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 And if you can't afford it, you can't get the service. They're going to walk out. They're going to say there's nowhere I can go to get help on my path to achieving oneness with my creator without being charged a whole bunch of money. Spirituality is supposed to be different. Spirituality is supposed to be different. Like I said, if you can show me something that says we should be charging high amounts of money, if you can show me something that says it's perfectly okay with God, with the Almighty, with Olofi, it's perfectly okay. With Nyame, it's perfectly okay to charge thousands of dollars for rituals, initiations, and other offerings. If you can show me that in any of the traditional African texts, I rest my case. If you can show me where it references traditional African spirituality as being accessible only to those who can afford it, I rest my case. I'm just simply saying I haven't seen it yet. I'm just simply saying this Ifa devotee hasn't seen it yet. And I'm not the only person who has an issue with the high cost of traditional African spiritual services. I'm not the only person with an issue. I hear the, the rumors. I hear the rumblings. I hear the grumblings. And I'm saying at a time like this, when African people need all the divine intervention we can get, we need all the ashe that we can get. We need all the secum that we can get. We cannot afford to have our people turned off from us because we are operating on the same capitalistic, thirsty financial paradigm as the black church. Let me know what you think. Send me a text message. Let me know what you think. Send me a text message. Let me know what you think. Send me a text message.